Hi, a quick video demonstration to show you how you can use R to prepare maps and overlay it with a root or points of interest or some other annotation. I created a new R project and I'm going to just start by creating an empty script add a comment at the top to tell me and remind me what this specific script is going to be about demonstrate plotting a map taken from Google I always like starting by cleaning my workspace and I'm going to save this as example map dot r now I do have a data file available uh, that I will show you just now so I'm going to start by just calling the libraries that I will need the first one is the CSV file I like using the read r package I'm going to call ggplot2 if you have it haven't installed some of these packages you will probably be required to first install them and then gg map so let's just clean out all of those and let's just say the data that i want to read in is latitude long longitude and estimated elevation as well as the estimated road grade which is the route that we traveled around the university of pretoria what is important is that you have latitude and longitude or the the, the order doesn't really matter uh, longitude is your kind of east uh, or west connection so we're 28 degrees east and we are 25.75 degrees south so you need the latitude and, and the longitude typically in decimal degrees in what we would call WGS 84 coordinate reference system. So the others uh, we're not really going to use in terms of the elevation or the road grade that was uh, relevant to a particular piece of research. I just want to show you the actual route and how we plot the XY values. <clears throat> right. So that's the, the data. You need some data frame where you have longitude and latitude, be it in individual points or be it a trace of a GPS or route or whatever format you, um, you can extract from the data that you want to plot. You do need the, them in the longitude and latitude um, format. And then what we will also need, since we're going to pull this map from Google, is we will need an API key. And this is something that you have to generate yourself. It is a text string. And the way in which you will go about doing that is to navigate to cloud.google.com. And you can either get started for free, but it you would typically need to log in using your um, Google account of some sort. You can use your university account. I'm going to just use for the sake of this demonstration my personal account and depending on what services you already subscribe to um, it may start or land on a specific page for you here. So I'm just going to search for Google Maps and you will see one of these suggested searches is Google Maps platform. And I'm just going to navigate to that. This is only the blog post. So let's see if we can navigate to the actual platform itself. Hmm. There's product news, Google Maps platform. No, nope, I don't want to be at the blogs. There is a link to the service level agreement. So let's see if we can navigate via that. Oh, 
Right. If we click on the service level agreement or the terms of service, it gives us a little um, shortcut link to the Google Maps platform. And it asks you to actually get started. So you get to have about $200 of usage for no charge. And if you want to draw away many more maps, then you will have to look at one of their pricing options. So we're going to say get started. And I've already created a project, which it might pick up. So it asks me to select a project. I've already created a UP access project. If you haven't, then you will probably just have to create a new project for yourself. And that's the one that I'm going to use. So currently there's no data usage. I haven't drawn maps in the last few months. Um, so we're kind of good to go and we don't really have to pay anything at this point in time. Right, so the important thing is that you navigate to credentials. I've already created one earlier, which I can actually delete at this point because I don't use that one right at the top. And let's go ahead and create new credentials at the top. I want to create an API key and it allows Google to identify and associate all the calls that you're going to make to a specific project so that you can um, get bold at the end of the day. If you don't use the key, they will not um, allow you to, to make any calls and download the maps. So yeah, you can read a little bit more in terms of editing your API key to add specific restrictions. I'm going to use it unrestricted at this point in time. So I'm just going to copy it to my clipboard and you can read up more in terms of what the limitations are and how you should manage these. Right. <clears throat> So we're going to navigate back to R and paste our API key in there. You have to use the one that you created as I'm going to delete this one uh, shortly after this demonstration. Right, so now we have an API key. Back in Google Cloud, you can actually have a look at the different map styles um, and you can read up more in terms of how do you go about customizing your task, working with different zoom levels. See if we can make this a little bit larger. And there are specific styling examples. How do you want to customize POI behavior, etc. So there's a whole lot of additional links and some support videos that I highly recommend that you um, kind of go through. What I'm going to use in in, in mine is typically the type of maps that I like to create as part of an, um, a report or a journal article. All right. So let's say we want to draw a map in the vicinity of the University of Pretoria. What we can do is we can create and go to maps.google.com. We navigate to the University of Pretoria. And let's say we want to navigate round about where my office is. I can right click on there and it will tell me what the coordinates are. So I can simply, whoops. Copy it to the clipboard. And let's call this just my POI. And just paste it in here. Now, it gives it by default in latitude, longitude. So it gives me the, the Y axis first, but I need to have it in an X, Y format. So I'm just going to swap this around. Oops. And do that. And we really don't need to go into that level of detail. So let's work to two decimal points. All right. You can add a buffer, so you can add something like a bit of a gap. I'm just going to say the gap at this point is zero. 
and I'm going to use the University of Pretoria as the center around which we want to create the, um, the map. What we will have to do, so let's just add that the center is going to be my point of interest. I also need to specify a zoom level and let's just use zoom level 13 by default. We can change this depending on your application. And now we're going to use a command which is get underscore Google map. So let's just have a look at the help function. Get Google map queries the Google map static API version 2 to download a static map. Note that in most cases by using this function you are agreeing to the Google Maps API terms of service and there it provides you with the link on where to navigate. Um, <clears throat> Note that as of mid-2018 registering with Google Cloud to obtain an API key is required to use any of Google services including get Google Map. Right, so we're going to start, I think it is necessary to say we want to register Google and we want to provide our key. Oops, we haven't called that yet, so let's read in the data. And we've registered our Google API. So let's go and get a map. Maybe we'll have to pass the key again. So we're going to get Google Map. And you will see that it asks for a center. It asks for a zoom level. It asks for a size if you want to specify that. And it asks for a scale. And it asks for different format. Um, and it does not seem to directly at this point ask for an API key but we might as well pass that and see whether that actually works so let's just start by saying our center is what we captured as the center we want the zoom level to be our zoom level we're going to leave the size the, the size default um, let's leave the scale default and just say that the map type is terrain and we should be able to hopefully call that and get something it does come back it gives us something in terms of map and if we're interested we can simply say plot map and there you see that it actually provides a map around the area of Pretoria. Now, it does not unfortunately give us a huge amount of area, not enough in terms of what we want to work at. So if we change the zoom level to a lower level and we just call this again, And we say plot map you will now see that it takes a much larger area so the smaller the zoom level the higher the elevation from which you're actually generating the map it's kind of the, the higher altitude you're looking at the earth from so depending on the type of map and the resolution or the details that you want to add you may want to look at city level at regional neighborhood level or maybe even at country level and depending on what um, it is that you want you um, can sit and play around with the zoom level now the the real magic actually comes in in the fact that you can provide what i like to use um, sorry to say color is a black and white map it just works better for me in a latex document and you can provide a whole style argument and to learn what the different style arguments are you will have to read up the api documentation in terms of what it is that you that you want so if we want to 
Um, just as one possible example, we want to have features, Oops, lowercase all, and this was generated uh, through trial and error. So we want all the feature elements. This is a black and white style. It is a terrain type map, um, <clears throat> but feature load road local. Uh, so all local roads, we actually want the visibility to be switched off. So you can express the, the style um, in whatever format it is that you're ultimately, ultimately after. So if, let's go back to Zoom 13. We don't have to provide the key because we've already registered it. And if we now pass a much longer string and we plot this, you will see that our map now looks slightly different. Now all the local roads have been taken out. The visibility has been made um, set to off. We've switched off the visibility so it's only the main roads that are showing we still have all of the neighborhoods and our zoom level is back where we back where we were but you can still get a gist of where the hilly mountainous areas are in this case if you're interested in um, in plotting that if you want to have an even more bare bones view let's just uh, take that one out and add a different style for us here. Oops. And let's say we want to have all of the features, points of interest. If we pass a different style argument, we can call our map, plot the map again, and if we have a look, oops, no, let's zoom, and now you will see that a lot of the other points of interest that we had earlier is now not um, plotted anymore. So depending on what exactly it is that you want to show um, you can play around with the style arguments until you find the map that you that you want i believe you should be able to find most of the different map styles and some styling examples And it will go through a lot of, of different um, ways of how do you go about adding your specific buildings or setting the building styles or customizing the, the, the script that you would actually need for a particular um, look and feel of the map. So there's a map style editor walkthrough. Um, and there is a Google Cloud console that you can go and work through as, uh, as well. And as you become more familiar with what exactly it is that you want to create, what you want to switch on and switch off, you should be able to, to find um, the correct arguments and come up with your own style expression in, in R. Right. <clears throat> I'm going to leave this one as is, and now let's move on to the actual GG plot portion. So we've already called, scroll to the left. So I'm just going to create an item called G, and I'm going to call my map. I 
I've learned that I want to specify the extent in terms of what should the, um, am I working with a page? Am I working with a graphics panel? Uh, but in this particular case, I want to create the entire device. The nice thing about GGMap is you can actually add to it. So I can either carry on here to say, but I want the coordinates to be um, fixed. Here I can actually specify the X limits, the Y limits, and I can work with what we call a bounding box. So if we were to we still have that graphic open you can you can provide the the bounding box for a specific area i think a bounding box typically is is a rectangle so you have to provide the minimum longitude the maximum longitude the minimum latitude and the maximum latitude where you actually want to cut uh, it off for that we need to go back to google maps let's zoom out and let's say we roughly want to map this rectangle at the bottom so I copied the bottom left corner um, and let's call that my bounding box and just paste the two values over there so let's just say we're gonna have our longitudes and we're gonna have our lats and longitude minimum will be that will be the first one and this will be our minimum and if we go to the top right let's say over here just on the other side of the intersection we can copy that and just paste it here. Control X. Right, so now we can call our longitudes, our latitudes, and again, we can simplify this quite a bit. Let's take out those last few digits. And let's make that seven. Just round it up. And now we make a bounding box using the command make bounding box and it wants our longitudes and latitudes so long is our longitudes and let is our latitudes and there we just have a bounding box which basically creates um, sorts our longitudes and latitudes in the correct order that we need if we now go to this command um, cohort fixed we can say that the X limitation is nothing other than our bounding box 1 and 3 so it takes the minimum long minimum lat max long max lat and then our y limit would be our bounding box two and four right so now we actually have two commands in one uh, it gives us a warning that the coordinate system is already present we're not going to worry about that too much this would have been exactly the same as saying that g is g plus oops no that's not what i wanted to do let's just i did not copy this correctly let's just cut that that would have been exactly the same so we can incrementally add to our map so we have a ggmap and we on top of that add limited coordinates and now let's add mind you let's just i think it is print g and here you actually see what the ggmap version would look like 
and use the coordinates that we created for the bounding box and that is what we have to work with right if we just want to print it but we can carry on we can titivate this a little bit more we can add points to it g plus oops g plus and now let's add geometry points and you'll see there are different things we can add paths polygons uh, line strings so there's a variety of things let's just add points we provide the data and ggplot is um, has its own let's call it grammar of graphics that you need to be somewhat familiar with uh, the data here that we want to use is what did we call it I think I called it just data yeah there it is data um, and then it works with aesthetics so we use AES and it wants to know X and Y so X in this case in our data file is going to be longitude and in the data file lat will be our Y values let's not add well let's make the color just red for all of them color is not an aesthetic of the data point um, let's just make them red and see whether that is sufficient so G second command third command and we should be able to print our data now since we're cutting off quite a bit of our points um, in terms of the extent of our um, map you'll see that um, it actually cuts it off if you only want to have a specific portion if you want to include it let's say we want to at least see this portion next to the highway we may want to take our longitudes and make that for example three zero create a new longitude new bounding box and now that we print it you will see that it includes the points right along the um, along the edge and you can play around with your bounding box to make sure that you plot exactly uh, what it is that you want to to show let's see if we can use a different color scheme here rgb let's make it red green blue so we want to make that one zero zero and the alpha value or the transparency level 0.1 let's see whether it likes that we create a new map and plot it not much of a difference we do see that it is slightly more transparent so you can play around with different um, coloring schemes as well if you want to save this file of yours um, one can go into a lot more detail here to provide additional annotation to provide additional specification but that will mean uh, that we need to dig a little bit deeper in ggplot's own um, let's call it grammar of graphics but for this video i only wanted to focus on the ability to get a map from google um, specify a specific style overlay it with traces or points or whatever it is that you want to plot and instead of printing it in the end you can go and say gg save the file name is let's say in my graphics folder map example let's say we want to go directly to a pdf and we want to specify that the height should be if i would to guess let's say four and the width is roughly about seven inches and by default this is in inches for for pdf uh, but you can also work with um, png files if if you so wish so if we save this it tells us that there's a lot of values that have been removed because they didn't fit onto onto the plot and that's perfectly fine and now if we navigate to graphics 
you will see that you have your map in a PDF format. We do see that it's, that it's got this white bar on the side. So if we want to get rid of that, we may want to make this, let's say, 6.8 inches. Um, save that. And you will see that the white bar on the sides is somewhat better. We can actually go down to 6.5, it seems. And that looks even better. Now I've got a nice map um, and I can, uh, I don't have to worry about white space around my image. And this will then fit nicely directly into your LaTeX document. All right, so I hope that has been helpful. Uh, create your API key on Google. Learn how to specify your own specific style. I would prefer that you always use a black and white map, um, but toy around, change your features and your style definition, um, and good luck creating your maps.